Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part seven of our .NET full stack series. So in the previous few videos, we have saw like how we can create our own uh, DB sets for our tables, right? So let me just show you the code here. So we have created this DB context file and we have already uh, initialized that all our DB sets. So now in this video, our goal is to establish a connection between your ORM and DB and the, in the database. So, you know, right, we are using the EF core and now we have to connect with the database so we have to specify our connection string somehow so to do that to create that connection right so this is what we are going to focus in this today's video and also we will see how we can run our first migration and also after running the migration we will verify all the columns which all the columns and tables which are created inside the database okay so to establish the connection right we have to create the db context so the file is created but i will not be establishing the connection in this file itself so what i'll do right i will create a new file whose name will be db blog db context factory okay so i will create a factory class inside this context so to create the class click this select class from here and give the name okay and just hit enter and now this class will get created now uh, what you need to do here right you have to inherit like you have to implement the interface name as design time db context factory okay and this is how it looks like and let me go ahead and uh, do all the missing imports okay and let me do this as well all right so now this is what this file will look like so what you have to do right this class inside this you have this method which returns a db context instance which is a uh, create db context okay and what you will be doing right you will take your db db context option builder and this will make use of the sql server okay so you as you are using sql server right so that's what you get this option and you have to specify your connection string over here okay so to get the connection string you have you can go into your db and you can get it quite easily and if you're not able to find it you can just do a google and you will be able to find the connection string for your database okay so for me i'm using azure data studio so i already have it ready with me so this is how the connection string looks like for me so i have a localhost server my database name i have to specify which is angular blog yt db and then this is just my username and password for that particular local database what i have configured okay so that's how this file looks like and now the moment you do this right you just have to save all the changes and now now we are ready to run our first migration command because i think the connection will be here established and i see already we have did all the configuration for all the tables and also in the db context factory we have already applied all our configuration okay so now let's go ahead and run our first migration command so if you are using vs code like me right then you just have to go inside the infrastructure folder okay so go into the infrastructure folder and then you have to run the command dot net add and all that so I'll, I'll tell you about those command but for the people who are using visual studio so you you must be using a package manager console so for that you just have to go on google and just search for it right so let me just show you what you need to do so we can say add migration commands okay dot net and ef core whatever you can search for okay asp dot net core so here you can get the migration commands and everything over here okay so can you see right this is what you get for the the cli way and this is what you get for the visual studio okay so make sure you're following this command to run your first migration okay so for me this is what the command they give so dot net ef migration so i can just go here and say dot net ef migrations add and then that's what you have to do so you have to make sure right so if you see my command i say dot net ef migrations add and you have to give the name of your migration so for me right i'll have to give a name this is my initial or i can say db setup okay db setup this is my first migration command and one thing to note here that if i'm using a cli way i'm trying to specify that my output directory should be inside the persistent slash migration because what this command does this creates a file okay I'll, I'll tell you about that file what that file does but what i'm saying right that file should be created inside this persistence okay inside this persistence i need to have that migrations file okay and let's hit enter let's see what happens so the build is started and i can see the build is success okay the moment it is success right can you see here in the migrations folder got created okay if i open up this folder right i can see that I have a DB context model snapshot over here. Okay. Can you see everything is mentioned over here? Like, okay, what is your entity? Okay. What is that? The property, what you have created? What is the NVARCARE max? What you have selected your date time and all that. 
So you can see all your table got created inside this. So this captures all the snapshot, like whatever you have mentioned. But if you see, if you go inside this one, this file, like 2024 and all that, the file, this is a unique one, huh? which it takes on the current time. So can you see that you have your class name DB setup and trust me guys, you don't have to touch this file anyway. This is just the migration command. What EF code will be writing up into your database. Can you see it is helping me to create the table table name is role and this role table has ID and this has a name and where care of 50, whatever you have given in the configuration, right? Everything got created. It also creates the constraint for you that, okay, this is my primary key, which is ID of this particular role table. And you can just go ahead and verify everything for your particular command. And then if you are okay, like, okay, everything is perfectly fine. What I wanted, then what you can do, right? You have to run the last command, which is the database update. Okay. Again, you can go here and you can find this command from the CLI or visual studio, whatever you are using. Okay. So for me, it is .NET EF database update. So let's go here and hit the command. Okay. If anything is wrong with the connection string or something is bad, then this command can fail. Okay. So let's see if everything is okay for us and let me hit enter. Okay. So the build has started now. Let's see what happens. Can you see everything was success and I can see applying the migration, this blah, 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 blah. And this is done. Okay. So if this is done, right, let's now we have to verify the changes if everything is okay or not. So what I'll do, right. I'll make use of my database studio, which is Azure data studio. And I'll just try to verify that the table got created or not. Okay. So in this, let me can do the connection here with the localhost. Okay. In the database, let me open up. Can you see, I have a angular blog YT DB created. Okay. And if you go inside this, right, you will see all your tables got created like blog comments, role, user roles and users. Okay. And there is also a migration history for your particular table. So can you see our first migration name was DB setup. And now this table tracks all your migration. And I can say that we have successfully ran our first migration and I can see all my tables got created. Okay. So now this is what I wanted to demonstrate to you about how you can apply your first migration. And also uh, we saw today that how we can create this particular DB context factory to initialize your DB context for creating the connection between your ORM and the database. Okay. So that's it from this today's video. If you have any doubt or queries related to this, and if something is going wrong uh, while applying the migration, so do let me know in the comment section. I will be there to help you guys so that once we do the next part, because next part we are going to see about creating our repositories. Okay. So we will be using generic repository pattern. Okay. With our unit of work and I'll try to demonstrate that how we can do that. But before reaching there, you have to make sure that everything is up and running till part seven of this video. I hope my contents are helping you to understand about the .NET and how this EF core things works in a .NET project. All right. So if you find this content helpful, then do share it with your friends and make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to support me, then you can head over to this website, buy me a coffee and to the, to my profile, shashikumar.y and you can support me from here by becoming my member or you can buy this particular .NET with clean architecture project. What I I will be building in the series. All right. So see you guys in the next video until then happy coding and keep learning guys.